psychedelic fungi uh, and plants have the ability to profoundly change our minds, uh, alter our perceptions and make us um, question those things which might be familiar uh, or otherwise taken for granted. My name's Merlin Sheldrake and I'm a biologist and a writer and I'm here at Penguin to talk about fungi and why they're a lot more interesting than you might think. Fungi are sometimes described as a, a neglected kingdom of life. Uh, we know very little about them compared to the other kingdoms of life like animals or plants. Out of the millions of fungal species that are estimated to exist on the planet, only about 6% of them have been described. Without fungi, without healthy uh, fungal communities, so much of what we think of as life on this planet cannot survive and cannot grow. Uh, so unless we conserve fungi, our other conservation efforts are uh, futile. Fungi used to be thought of as uh, plants or as lower plants, but in fact they're more closely related to animals than they are to plants. When we think of fungi, we usually think of mushrooms, but mushrooms are only the reproductive structures of fungi. And most fungi live most of their lives as mycelium, which is the name given to the branching, fusing networks of tubular cells that fungi use to feed and to transport substances around themselves. If you took the mycelium in a teaspoon of healthy soil and unraveled it and strung it end to end, it could stretch anywhere from 100 meters to 10 kilometers. We're used to thinking of our brains and our hearts as the center of our bodies, and indeed they are. Um, and we like to build societies uh, with heads of state and capital cities and these mirror the centralized organizations in our body. Fungi have a totally different way of organizing themselves and this raises lots of profound questions uh, for researchers trying to understand their lives. Fungi live their lives enmeshed in their environment and they form literal connections between organisms and in so doing they embody the fundamental principle of ecology which is the relationships between members of the living world. They're able to do this by um, their sophisticated uh, manners of communication. So fungal networks have to stay in touch with themselves. They sprawl over large areas, um, exposed to all sorts of different environments. Uh, one of the largest fungal networks described thus far is a network in Oregon that sprawls over nearly 10 square kilometers and is somewhere between 2,000 and 8,000 years old. In school classrooms, there are often posters on the walls which show the human body rendered as a skeleton, as a network of blood vessels, as a network of neurons. And if you were to make equivalent maps of ecosystems, one of those layers would show the fungal mycelium that runs through uh, connecting these organisms through their bodies, alive and dead, through the soil. And these fungal networks can string multiple plants together in shared networks, sometimes known as the wood wide web through which nutrients and other um, compounds can pass. Um, this is really an exciting discovery that's emerged in the last few decades and the consequences are still yet to be uh, fully worked out by researchers. Imagine the puzzlement of an extraterrestrial anthropologist who came to Earth um, to study humanity and been studying humanity for several decades and only found out yesterday that we had something called the internet. It's a little bit like that for um, for modern ecologists. Psychedelic fungi uh, and plants have the ability to profoundly change our minds, uh, alter our perceptions and make us um, question those things which might be familiar uh, or otherwise taken for granted. The question of why some fungi are able to produce psilocybin, uh, a compound which is able to, to slip into the nervous systems of some animals uh, and profoundly change our experience, um, remains a mystery. Uh, there are a number of hypotheses. One is that psilocybin evolved as a deterrent to put off uh, certain animals from eating the mushrooms that produced it. The problem is that there are plenty of insects uh, and other small animals that can eat psilocybin producing mushrooms without apparent ill effect. Uh, so others suggest uh, that perhaps psilocybin acts as a lure and attracts uh, insects or, or other uh, animals that can help to spread the spores of these, um, of these fungi. Certainly for humans, psilocybin is anything but a deterrent. This compound and its peculiar effects on our minds and senses um, has led humans into all sorts of relationships with these mushrooms over the years. And a handful of tropical species now make their homes in all sorts of climates on people's windowsills, in cupboards, in warehouses, uh, all grown for their uh, psychedelic effects. 
Psilocybin has the ability to soften the rigid habits of our minds, make the familiar seem unfamiliar, uh, to lead us into states of cerebral flux, um, unconstrained styles of cognition, and can help us to approach old stubborn questions from new angles. And for these reasons, it's been found to be very helpful for those suffering from depression, uh, for anxiety following terminal diagnoses, and for uh, those suffering from addictions. And we've come quite some way from uh, the knee-jerk banning of these compounds in the late 60s and early 70s. Human history is inextricably bound up with fungi. Alcohol is produced by yeasts, which are fungi, and bread rises because of yeasts also. Humans have used fungi medicinally in many ways. Penicillin is a very famous example, an antibiotic that changed the course of modern medicine. Alkaloids extracted from ergot fungi, which grow on uh, grains, uh, were used historically by midwives and herb wives uh, to induce uterine contractions and to stop postpartum bleeding. Whenever we cultivate a plant, whenever we feed ourselves with a plant, we are entering into a relationship with a fungi or with communities of fungi that we don't realize are there. What we think of as plants are really algae that have evolved to farm fungi and fungi that have evolved to farm algae. And today, uh, almost all plants depend on relationships with mycorrhizal fungi, which means root fungi, that live in their roots and extend into the soil and help them to acquire nutrients and water and protect them from disease and without which uh, plant life would be impossible. There are many ways that we might be able to partner with fungi to help us uh, adapt to the pressing problems that we face today. Um, fungal medicines is one example, whether for humans or for other organisms on which we depend. Recent research has found that uh, antiviral compounds produced by certain species of fungi are able to prolong the life of bees and help them to overcome uh, colony collapse disorder. Sustainable materials produced from fungal mycelium can replace plastic and leather and other polluting materials in uh, construction, in fashion. Adidas are working on a mycelial sneaker, for example. It's possible to make building blocks and boards from mycelium without the need for toxic resins and which decompose when their job is done. Fungi make a great food source, whether it's mushrooms or mycelium, and can help take the pressure off conventional um, forms of agriculture. Mycorrhizal fungi, which form symbiotic relationships with plants, uh, sequester enormous amounts of carbon, uh, and much of the carbon which is found in soils, uh, which amounts to more than that found in plants and the atmosphere combined, is bound up in these, in these fungi and in the tough compounds that they produce and release into the soil. And these fungi make up uh, between a third to a half of the living mass of soils. So all our attempts to draw down carbon from the atmosphere uh, using living organisms and living ecosystems depends in some way on fungi. A fungi is strange and puzzling and trick us out of many of our preconceptions and invite us to question many of the categories we use to organize our lives and societies whether autonomy, uh, individuality, independence, intelligence, and many more. Thinking about fungi makes the world look different. And I hope that as we think about them more, we're able to change our behaviors to become more responsible citizens of this planet and respond in more imaginative ways to the many challenges that we face. Thanks for watching.